Hi, my name is Paul Tranny, and what I'd like to show you is how to take advantage of specific mobile capabilities. In this case, I want to get GPS data. So I want to get satellite data on my specific position. Not only that, not only do I want to get that latitude and the longitude, but I want to go ahead and display my position on a map. In this case, that's going to be a Google map. So I'm going to do this all in Flash. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Code Snippets panel, and I'm going to go ahead and import a Code Snippets XML file. Here's that mobile XML. I'm going to click Open. And it adds all these different mobile capabilities. Now, what I want to do is I want to select this last one right down here, Google Maps. Now, keep in mind, this is really just a blank document, uh, and it's just set uh, with a stage size set for a mobile device. And I'll just double click that code snippet to add it. All right, so here's the code snippet that gets added. And right up here at the top are just some directions on exactly what needs to happen. So I'm going to use the Google Maps API uh, for Flash specifically for this to work. So I need to do three things uh, ultimately. First thing is going to be loading up this SWIC file. So this is basically all the code in order for this to work. I need to import that SWIC file into the FLA file that I'm using. I'm then going to uh, add a URL and an API key. And I'm going to get those both when I sign up uh, for that Google Maps API. Uh, so really what I need to do is I need to go out to uh, Google, and I'm just going to copy this, uh, this URL and go to that site. So here it is. Here's uh, code.google.com forward slash APIs forward slash maps forward slash documentation forward slash flash. All right, and off to the right, you can see it says sign up for a Google Maps API key. Well, I can do that, but right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download the SDK and then I can jump in and sign up while that's downloading. So I'm going to select SDK and it's going to go ahead and download. Now, while that's downloading, I'm going to go to sign up for a Google Maps API key. And of course, you need to go ahead and read all of this because there are some really not many restrictions. It does say that there's really no limit to the number of page views, no limit uh, for the geocode requests per day, uh, and the API doesn't include advertising. But really why I'm using Google Maps is because with most Android devices, uh, Google Maps is really the default Maps application. So I really want uh, my application that I'm building in Flash to match up with what's on the device. OK, so right down here, I can read through the terms and conditions. Select check, that checkbox, and you've read them. I read them all earlier, so I can go ahead and hit that checkbox. Type in a website URL. Type in my URL. And this is one of the things that I'm going to need, because again, back in those directions that I uh, was reading earlier in Flash, it does mention that I need a website URL. So I'm basically registering this URL uh, with Google saying, hey, this is who's using it. And then I can just select Generate API Key. And there's my key right there. So I'm going to use that in a second, OK? But I basically have everything I need. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that SDK that I've download, downloaded. I'll just go ahead and show this in my Finder. Here's the SDK. I'm given this Docs folder, which has all the documentation about uh, using uh, Google Maps. But really what I want to do is go to this lib folder, and I want to select this map SWIC file. Not the flex one, just the regular map one. Currently, it's, it's version 1.2 is what it is. Uh, might be a different uh, version depending uh, on when you've downloaded this. But again, I'm just going to copy this, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'll paste it onto my desktop right next to my, uh, my FLA file. So again, I need to add this SWIC to my FLA file. All right, I'll go back into Flash. And again, I need to add it to my FLA. So I'm going to do that by going to my Properties panel. I'll select Action Script Settings. And under Library Path, it says you can go ahead and select the SWIC files to add. And I'm going to select my SWIC file by selecting this SWIC file icon. Selecting that, it opens up 
uh, a browser to enable me to select that SWIC file, select open, and now it gets added. So if I twirl that down, notice that it does say it's going to merge it into the code. So it might mean my file might be a little larger, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's really not, not that bad at all. But again, all that code is available. I didn't have to write any of it, but I get to take advantage of its power. So with that imported, I can select OK. And again, uh, number one is taken care of. Next up, the URL. The URL I basically used when I signed up for the API. That's another thing I need. As I scroll down, you can see there's the URL. It says where the URL goes. Just drop it right in here, like that. The API key is another thing I need for the key. And again, this is going to give me the ability to take advantage of the map. So let me go back out to my browser. And again, here's my key. I'll select it. I'll copy it, go back into Flash, and paste it right in here. All right, that's in place. The URL, the key is in place. My SWIC file is loaded in because all these import statements are going to be accessing that SWIC file. And I can start scrolling down and determining these various things. So set the size of the map is the first thing that I'm doing. So and again, my map is referred to just as map. That's its instance name. I'm setting the size. And as soon as it's ready, as soon as it's loaded in, go ahead and fire off the on map ready function. Here we are on map ready. You can see that there's this geolocation event update. And this is referring to my, uh, this geo variable right here. So right here, we're going to be using basically the latitude and the longitude of the device. OK, so when you th see geo, think of the latitude and the longitude. That's what's being used. OK, so when the map is ready, it listens for an update. And this is you know, when the person moves. And you can even set uh, how often it updates that uh, geolocation, that geo instance. But again, I'm just going to leave it as the default. The next, next thing that happens is, again, once the map is ready, it's going to go ahead and add the various controls. So uh, controls to manipulate the map. And again, these aren't uh, required. They are optional. But again, you can see I'm going to have the ability to zoom. It will uh, position the map. So again, I can pan around on that map. Uh, and I can also go ahead and choose the type of map. And again, I'm just using the normal type map. But you have that type of map. You can change it, say, for instance, from terrain to street view, even to satellite view. All right, so now we get into the geo update. Because again, as the person moves, it's going to fire off this function. And what we're doing here is we're setting the center based on the person's latitude and longitude. Okay, So as it gets these numbers, it's going to go ahead and set that to the center. Okay, So keep in mind the latitude and longitude uh, come from the geo instance right here. Okay, but you can also get additional properties such as speed and altitude. So there's quite a bit you can do with it. But in this case, it's going to get the latitude and the longitude. Those are going to be the coordinates. It sets the center of the map to those coordinates. Uh, keep in mind the map type is just going to be the normal type, so it's going to give you sort of the default street view. Next up is a marker is added. Okay, so again, here's the instance that gets created. Marker A creates this new marker on the center of my stage, quite frankly, at that specific latitude and longitude. So add marker to the current location on the center of the stage. All right, so that's where it puts that marker. And again, here's where it gets added to the stage is add overlay. 
So there's more you can do. You can actually add additional markers. You can hard code latitude and longitude numbers based on, say for instance, certain stores. You can hard code that in and they will appear on the map in those certain locations. But with this all set up, all I need to do is go to File and publish this out to test it out on a device. I'm going to select Flash and I'm going to publish it out to Air for Android. And again, I got this off of labs.adobe.com. I'll go to Settings. This is going to be called Google Maps.apk. Don't call it just Maps because there happens to be already an application on our device called Maps, so be aware of what you name your, your app. But Google Maps is fine here. And I'll give it an app ID. Let's make sure it's portrait. It's going to go full screen. And what I want to do is I need to go into permissions. Because right down here, notice I can go ahead and access the fine location. And that's going to be the GPS location. So it gets down to, in the US, it actually gets clear down to within three meters of where the person is. But I do need to let the user know that it's, it's going to access the fine location. But in addition to that, I'm actually getting the map from Google. So I need to make sure I check internet access as well. So those are the two, uh, the two permissions I need to set. I'll go to Deployment, Connect My Device, and then click Publish. And again, my device is connected by USB. I'll click Publish. And it will publish it out to my device. So as you can see, here is my Google map. You can see that it adds that marker right in the center. Then the map loads in. I have the controls in the uh, upper left as well. And again, I can always, since this is a device, I can pan around with one finger. I can zoom in and use those controls, pretty much anything I want. But you can see I'm actually just outside Boston. But it's working great. I was able to take advantage of the Google Maps API, as well as geolocation capabilities, getting the latitude and the longitude to determine my position on that map works out great. And really, it's cool that I can take advantage of these specific capabilities of mobile devices. So I encourage you to check out Adobe Developer Connection for more information. And thanks for watching.